comes from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good things. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the second lesson is from 2 Peter chapter 13, verses 8 through 15. But do not ignore the one, this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to re repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of people all ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him in peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. This is the word of the Lord.
beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. John the Baptizer from the Gospel reading this morning is trying to help us to prepare, to prepare the way of the Lord, to get ready for an encounter with this holy God. And as it happens, it's much the same thing we're trying to do in this Advent season. We are trying to prepare the way for the Lord's coming. We're using this time to prepare for an encounter with God. So how do we do that? Precisely. I mean, it's easy to think that John has some kind of advantage, which makes sense, he being Jesus' cousin and Paul, at least according to Luke's Gospel. I mean, Jesus and John, they probably had play dates together, they probably played tag together, they knew each other, they were hitting balls together, you know, in the park outside of Galilee. He was closely related to Jesus, so we might think, well, yeah, it's easy for him to prepare the way of the Lord. He, he knew Jesus. He was related to Jesus. But we, too, are called to prepare the way of the Lord, to prepare our hearts. So in the midst of a season whose focus is on preparation and readiness, this season really has and continues to have a joyful flavor to it. I mean, there has been some serious decorating around this church, and, and I'm sure there's probably been some decorating that you've done in your own homes. I mean, we decorate to make things look joyful, right? Gleeful. We, we decorate to make things seem a little nicer for us. So we're in this season where we focus on preparation, and it's a season that's full of joy, not a season full of gloom. So Advent has this joyful feeling to it. It's not a somber time. It's, it's not a painful time. It's a joyful time. We call it a holiday season, a joyful time. And in it, we prepare the way of the Lord. This season is a season of singing, or at least listening to music. There's music everywhere, in the stores, in our offices, in our, in our homes, in the car, holiday stations that play Christmas music 24-7. And it's true, generally speaking, that most of the time we don't sing together like we used to, but... During this time, we're filled with all of this song. Most of the year, we leave it to the experts to sing. But in this season, we sing, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. I mean, who doesn't like to sing that song, right? Oh, little town of Bethlehem. I mean, even if you aren't a good singer, you still like to mouth out those verses, right? What child is this? Silent night, who doesn't sing Silent Night in this season? I mean, we sing and we remember the promise of peace on earth and goodwill to all. So why is it that now, of all times, 
signs, we sing. I want us to consider that, that question. I want us to think about our, our singing. And I want to ask this question, or at least I want you to think about this question. How do we sing to the Lord when we really don't feel like singing? How do we sing to the Lord when we really aren't filled with joy? How do we sing to the Lord when we're filled with despair and sadness and grief and loneliness? How then do we offer this song to the Lord in this season of Advent? I mean, that's going to be our question today. So let's ask it once again. How do we sing to the Lord when we really don't feel like singing? How can we sing in this time when there are people who are suffering? For some, maybe even for you, this is not a singing, a, a season for singing. This is and has been a season of suffering. There is loss for you. There is grief for you. There is hardship for you. There is loneliness. For you, there is illness for you. And we walk around hearing the carols and seeing the visions of abundant family celebrations and abundant presents. But we're living in a strange land, really a wilderness land of grief and, and loneliness or, or death. And we're struggling to find hope. For so many of the messages of the season proclaim that our hope is in presence, or that our hope is in family, or that our hope is in good health. And perhaps we are wondering together whether we can sing the Lord's song this year. Perhaps we are wondering how we can live our faith this year, or even believe our faith is true this year. I mean, this was true for the people when John the Baptist came on the scene. He was the voice crying out in the wilderness. That's what our gospel says, a voice crying out in the wilderness. In those days, the Jewish people were strangers and in exile in their own land. They were occupied by the mighty Roman army. And so they too might have been asking the question that we are asking today. How can I sing to the Lord when I live in the wilderness or when I live in a foreign place, a strange place? How can I sing to the Lord? And what does it mean for us to hear the voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord? What season are we preparing for? And what are we waiting for? in this Advent time? What mountains need to be lowered and what valleys need to be raised up in our lives? How do we prepare the way of the Lord when we are adjusting our lives or when we are adjusting our hopes? You know, just yesterday we gathered with the families of this community who have lost loved ones. Thirty-five loved ones were lost in our community this past year. And so we gathered for a memorial service at the funeral home to read scripture, to remember, to sing. And we brought our grief and our sadness to the Lord. And as we sat together, I couldn't help but ask that question. How can we sing to the Lord? when we're filled with grief and loneliness. And I couldn't help but think of the words of the prophet Isaiah that we read this morning. Comfort, comfort my people, the Lord told the prophet. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn. A voice cries out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. And as we gathered at the funeral home, our tears welled up in our eyes, but we sang. 
we sing together. So how did we sing? And it was as if God was answering our question right there. Right there in the scriptures it says, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, for the Lord is coming into the wilderness. The Lord is in the wilderness. The Lord is in that strange land. Just as the prophet came to the people living in exile so long ago, so also the prophet's words comes to us today. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the rough places shall be made plain. In the wilderness, in the foreign land, in the strange land, in a strange place, prepare the way of the Lord. For the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming to you wherever you are. In your life, the Lord is coming. In whatever wilderness you find yourself in today, the Lord is coming. If you are grieving, the Lord is coming. If you have strayed from the faith, the Lord is coming. If you feel like giving up, the Lord is coming. If you have put your hope in the wrong place, the Lord is coming. If you hunger and thirst for righteousness, the Lord is coming. Prepare the way of the Lord. The Lord is coming. We sing because God is coming to us in the wilderness. We sing because God is coming to us in a foreign land. We sing by working for justice in places where strangers are trampled upon. We sing by offering forgiveness to those who have wronged us. We sing by bringing comfort to others who are lonely. We sing using our lives to share God's love in the world. We sing to prepare the way of the Lord. We sing because God is coming to us here, where we are, in the wilderness, even where our hopes are dashed, or where people are broken. Prepare the way of the Lord, for even in the wilderness, the Lord is coming. So sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord with your love. Amen.